Hey everyone, full-time living is awesome most of the time, but sometimes things just don't go right. And we want to share some of those things that have gone wrong in the last five months, including why we've been in someone's driveway for the past week and a half and why we might not ever buy a Ford truck again. Hi, I'm Rhonda. I am Angie. And we are Adventures in Nomadness. And we're here to share some of the not so fun things that have happened to, to us recently. But first, we're gonna get out of our friend's driveway so that they can do something other than entertain <laughs> us for a week or more. And with that being said, Kim and Ellen, you are our heroes over the past week and a half. You are awesome and we are so happy that you are friends. Yep, more to come. Mm -hmm. All right, we made it to our new campsite at Mary Hill State Park, and we'll have more on this state park in our next video. So things go wrong, and we wanted to talk about that, but if you get some value out of this video, please consider hitting the subscribe button and hitting that like, thumbs up for us. It helps our videos get in front of other like-minded people. Let's take it away. This is what I was doing in Sildatna when we were going around the Kenai Peninsula. Why? Because we were looking for camping, pulled over to check the map and heard a loud beeping coming from the RV. And as it turned out, it was the propane monitor going off. Oh no, serious issue. Do you dare open the door? Well, we did. And it turned out that it, we couldn't find any propane leaks. So why was it going off? Well, there's lots of false readings that could happen. Various smells like and aerosol cans like hairspray, dog farts, and many other things. But we looked all over. There was an odor in there. We couldn't figure out where it came from. It never appeared again. We think it might have been hand sanitizer or something else that spilled. We never did find it. But from then on, we have never gone down the road with our propane on for our fridge. I'd rather lose a little bit of food and not have a big explosion. Well, fortunately that propane was not a big deal and it all ended well. But something that was a really close call also on that same trip was a fire. There was a fire in a log literally two feet away from the back of our RV. We were out doing tourist things all day long. The dogs were in the RV and we came back to this. Oh, sorry. You all we can't tell you how much we appreciate you kind of keeping an eye and we were we were out all afternoon and had no clue that this was even happening so close to the RV. All right we're moving spots we're gonna move from this spot right here with a nice bay view to that spot right here. Why? Well we got back from being out this afternoon in Homer to find out that there had been a fire literally a few feet from the back end of the RV. I mean, there were actually flames coming out. We really don't know why. The folks that are right next to us, awesome family, grandparents and their grandkids, uh, had a fire earlier today, but they made sure it was out. I've been watching them. I mean, the fire pit is a little close to our RV, but you know, they made sure it was out with water, and they went out and they did their own thing today too. And so we all came back. Uh, our neighbor over here, had found the flames and actually alerted the uh, the campground staff, and they came over here to water and doused it. 
Well, here's a couple issues with Alaska. Uh, there are times when you have a fire and it can come underneath the ground to the peat and actually spread underground. The other problem here is that there's a couple logs. The logs are really old and the logs might have caught fire. So we really honestly don't know exactly what happened. All we know is that we came back with our dogs in the RV and our permanent home and there were flames right here. <laughs> a little freaky. Well, water when you're camping is so awesome. And we always fill up our tanks before going to another spot if we don't think there's going to be water. And we made a big mistake. So we left a full service RV park in Homer. We dumped our tanks because we knew there was gonna be water at the next stop and why travel with all the extra weight? Ah, oh! Yeah, that was the wrong move on that particular one. I had looked at the website to see if the particular uh, Forest Service campground we were going to had water and it said that it did. And unfortunately, this is what happened. I double checked the website for this Forest Service campground and it did say it had drinking water here like it did. So I just wanted to make sure I didn't miss anything there. But I had to pump this about 25 times to get any water out of here whatsoever. Uh, I wouldn't want to use this as drinking water straight out of here. It's like pea colored. <laughs> it's gross. Fortunately, we have a Berkey. We went and bought some other water and we're just going to use that for toilet water. So fortunately, even though our tanks were dry, uh, this is a definitely a lesson learned um, that if you have water, fill up your tanks in the next spot, even if they say they have water. Because normally we have a, a bandit we could put on here and fill up water, and if, even if we had to do a bunch of one gallon jugs. We've done that too, but yeah, th this is not an ideal situation in an RV to get water. I love my Ford F-150. It's the customer service. Ah! Yeah, this was by far, and I had this guy on speakerphone, so we both heard it. This was by far the most maddening customer service experience either one of us have had. Now, let us tell you the whole issue. So we traded in our 2008 Ford F-150 for, for a 2019, a brand new one, uh, in the fear that we were gonna have a transmission issue because that truck had been known to have some transmission issues. Well, guess what? We're 33,000 miles into our two-year-old Ford, and guess what we're experiencing? A transmission issue. Yeah. <laughs> so we call just about every Ford in Washington State, and most of them are four to six weeks out for, uh, for servicing. We're like, oh no, this is not good. We're supposed to drive all the way to Texas to visit Rhonda's family. We have a long way to go. We found, uh, we did find a couple of Ford dealers we could get in uh, within the, a couple weeks. And so we came down to Vancouver Ford and had our service uh, appointment. So I will say Brandy at Vancouver Ford has been awesome. So big thumbs up for her. She really tried to help us out. Uh, the problem was with the Ford company as a whole. Now, number one, you shouldn't be having transmission issues on a brand new truck. Really shouldn't be having any issues. But hey, I'm a mechanic and I realize that stuff happens. I used to work on brand new airplanes and parts went bad all the time on those. Okay, I can deal with that as long as the company sort of backs up their product and they, they do the right thing. So we get in, she, they uh, uh, do discover that there's an issue and they need to order parts for it. And uh, if you're familiar, you know, parts right now are, are kind of hard to come by. She was hoping that she can get an override and just to have our transmission replaced, she could have gotten the transmission in the next day and had us out, in and out in just a couple of days. That's the route she wanted to go. Uh, unfortunately, she needed an override from Ford, but they use an automated system, and so she knew that she would be turned down for that request, and so she had us call the main Ford customer service number in the hopes that we could, you know, tell them our, our plight, that this was basically stranding us in Vancouver, and that they would override and, and authorize the transmission versus trying to wait for parts. Now, this is the thing. She had no idea how long it was gonna take, because clearly there was a back order on these parts, 
And basically, the idea was, hey, you can go down the road if you want, and we'll try to get those parts to you in some other dealership down the road, wherever you end up. And basically, that would be us driving our home down the road at risk of the transmission completely failing. Right, towing and our home. So, in order to track said parts, they need a, a tracking number. A case that number. Can, oh, that case number. Mm -hmm. And it can only come from customer service. So, we were trying to get a case number so we could at least track this part that's back ordered for said issue on our truck. So otherwise, they basically would lo lose track of us if we didn't have it. So that's really why we needed to call them in the first place. But this guy, no, he would not listen to anything we had to say except Yes, I understand, and I am listening. He wasn't. So, yeah, it was like he kept it was giving like, us the same stuff back and forth. And it he was refused. like talking to a robot. Yes. It was it was just absolutely ridiculous. So, unbeknownst to him, Brandy at Vancouver Ford had uh, found the parts in Detroit, and so we had called back and said, "Hey, can you at least expedite these parts?" Because she said it, would, it might take a week. And they wouldn't even do that. So they wouldn't consider expediting the part. They would not even, yeah, and as far as he knew, they still hadn't found the part. And so he was completely okay with us being stranded uh, in Vancouver where we don't live for months. I mean, he had no qualms with that and just kind of kept, you know, doing the placating thing. Oh, everybody's waiting for parts. I'm like, yeah, we actually have the part. So we're yeah. either hoping to, you know, get it expedited. So it took uh, over a week to get the part here because uh, it was sent bulk shipment with a whole bunch of other parts and that took a full week so uh, again we cannot thank our friends Kim and Ellen enough in Vancouver for letting us driveway surf for what was, rock. what was supposed to be a two night uh, stay turned into a week and a half um, yeah I so we had been happy with our Ford having a transmission transmission issue has not been awesome but their huge lack of understanding of our predicament of getting kind of stuck and not even considering it we tried to talk to someone higher up but their supervisor is on like a 24 to 48 hour wait so bottom line is customer service yeah. you need a customer service on your customer service right because you're terrible really you're terrible it was bad and so that left a, a very bad impression uh, left a very bad taste in our mouths as far as far as Ford so when it comes time to replace this truck I don't think we'll buy another Ford it has really put us off so all of these issues does it mean that we're gonna stop RVing absolutely not and in fact, as you've seen, we are back in a park and back on the road. You really Yay. just have to stay patient and work through it. Uh, and really, a few things are going to go wrong. It doesn't matter how much planning and prevention you do. That doesn't mean you shouldn't do that. It's just that rec recognize that you will have something go wrong eventually. And don't give up. Just keep on plugging because you're eventually gonna come out on the other end and be in a beautiful place like this, so. And your friends are there to help. Yeah, happy travels, everybody. Bye.